This 2025 Ram 1500 RHO has four-wheel drive auto and four-wheel drive high. Other Ram trucks have a two-wheel drive button. So why is this different? And how does two-wheel drive work with four-wheel drive auto? And why is there four-wheel drive auto and four-wheel drive high if it's always gonna engage four-wheel drive? Hey, it's Tim, pickup truck plus SUV talk. If that confused you, well, it confused me. I made a video about top likes and dislikes this truck and I included that in the video. I got a lot of comments back going, no, it works like this. No, it works like that. No, it works like this. I did some Googling as well, and there are answers all over the place. And I thought, no, nah, hold on. As a journalist, I am fortunate to have access to some of Ram Engineering team. And in this video, we're going to talk with Doug Killian about the four-wheel drive auto system, also two-wheel drive, and understand how these systems work and why you'd use one over another, and give you information on what you need to know about durability and mile per gallon questions as well. Let's go and get this video. All right, here is Doug Killian. He is the chief vehicle synthesis, I can't say the word, manager. I looked it up, he's got the great title. Um, we're talking about full drive auto. And the reason we're talking about this is I did a video a couple days ago on things I liked and liked my truck. And I'm, I am I put the stuff in full drive auto on there. It's a little confusing in my head. And then I did the video and I published it. People started asking me questions about it. And I watched my segment again. And I was like, I'm freaking confused. I, I shouldn't have filmed that. <laughs> then I did some Googling. And everybody's got different answers on this. What happens, what kind of transfer case it is, how much torque goes forward, how much torque goes back, when does it kick on, lots of questions. So I have a 2025 Ram 1500 RHO because I think that that matters. I think different trims have maybe a different setup. I have a four-wheel drive auto, four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive low. Those are my choices. Now, I got to have two-wheel drive some way or something because you can't drive four-wheel drive high because you wouldn't turn, right? So the, the, I guess the, see, I'm telling you, I've just freaking lost it on this, Doug. Okay. All right. I, I know, I know where your mind's going. We have in engineering have, have to deal with these sort of conundrums often. <laughs> All right. So, and I also looked up the system came out, what, 2011? I think you guys have been doing it since, uh, since then. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah. and it occurred to me, I know why I don't know about this because I didn't start my career until 2012. See, okay. if I was around back then, I would ask this question. Mm -hmm. All right, so mm -hmm. how does four-wheel drive auto work in your okay. engineering terms? Okay, so we, on, a, on our trucks, and I'm going to speak specifically about how we do trucks, and I'll draw some parallels to SUVs and some maybe lighter-duty all-wheel drive type of vehicles. And it's a bit of a hot topic of all-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive and four-by-four. Uh, it's something we pay very close attention to on our trucks. When we put a four by four badge on a truck, it means four by four. So first thing it starts with, when we say four wheel drive auto, what we're doing is we're controlling the amount of torque that can go to the front axle. And essentially when you put your truck in two wheel drive, there's a set of clutches that are just disengaged. So that transmission, the shaft comes out of the transmission, it goes straight through to the rear wheels and there's a set of clutches which can engage the front axle or the front drive shaft, that clutch is just spinning free. And okay. so there's no, there's no torque that's going to pass through. So it's all going to the rear wheels. Now, when you go to four wheel drive auto, so in your truck, you're just going to press the button. In auto, a whole bunch of sensors are going to now essentially be ready to respond and the first thing we're going to do is, is engage that clutch. So we're going to send some torque over to the, to the front drive shaft. And it, if you look under your truck, you'll see it, it rides right on the side of the transmission. And there's a chain that connects in the transfer case and connects that front drive shaft. So we're basically, we're going to, we're going to connect it and we're going to send some torque through there. And then all of those sensors that I mentioned that are going to kind of come alive and be ready to respond. They're going to look at one, what drive mode are you in? It's going to say, did, did Tim pick? snow mode or did he pick baja and his rho or rain snow those those are drive modes we have some preset conditions so i'm going to start with the most uh, perhaps aggressive one which is rock mode and if you go to to rock mode we automatically even in auto if you're in auto we're going to send that torque and we're going to lock up that clutch and we're going to have 50 percent torque going to the front and 50 percent to the rear Okay. So that's where a drive mode comes in. And if you pick Baja, we're expecting you're going to want to drift around in the in the sand. We're actually going to send most of the torque to the rear. We call it a 75-25. So 75% is going to head to the rear, 25 to the front. And that's going to give you that ability to having more torque in the rear 
It's going to spin the rear wheels. It's going to get more torque to the ground faster, and you'll get that oversteer drifting kind of behavior out of the truck that you like. So that's where drive modes come in. So we're able to adjust those clutches. So I talked about the clutch going all the way to 100%. We can go anywhere from what we call the kiss point, where those there's actually discs in this transfer case. And those discs just kind of, they, they reach this kiss point where they're just basically touching. We go from that kiss point all the way into fully, fully engaged, fully locked, which is 50% rear, 50% front. Hmm. What we're also doing, Tim, is we're looking at the steering wheel sensor. So even if you're in 50-50 and you start to go around a turn, and if, I'm sure you've experienced crow hop before on a non-active yep. TKs, when you're not in auto, yeah, you're kind of jumping mm -hmm. Uh the reason that is, is that all four wheels are essentially following a different path around a turn. So the, the rear axle, the average speed of the inside and outside wheels on the rear axle is different from the average speed of the front axle inside and outside wheels. So you have a speed differential. And if that transfer case is totally locked, there's nowhere for that speed differential to happen other than jumping and skipping such that they're all going to be forced to run the same speed. And that only happens in a turn. When you're going straight, unless you have a difference in size of tires or something, uh, it, which which is you know abnormal, there's it, when you're going straight, it's not a problem. So we effectively bring that lock those clutches up when you're going straight. When the steering wheel turns, we start to back off on those clutches and allow some slip to happen. And that's why you don't crow hop when you're in four wheel drive auto and you turn the wheel. Hmm. So uh, so really. Because in my truck, I don't have a two-wheel drive option. So okay. I'm I'm always engaged in four-wheel drive. Yes. Auto. Yes. And then you're saying when I go around a turn, the reason I don't hop is because of the, the, the clutches and things, essentially. Okay. That's and right. Yes, and your RHO. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Because many of our Ram trucks, we have the two-wheel drive setting. We have to go into four-wheel drive auto. Yours is always just in four-wheel drive auto. So we start yeah. you out with, with that level of... of torque that's there going to the front axle all the time, but it's pretty light for, for normal driving. As soon as you okay. pick a different mode, or if we ever see slip, if you get on it and we see some slip that's happening, like in milliseconds, we're tightening up those clutches and sending torque to the axle that has the most traction. Yeah. I noticed that on my uh, road trip home, I got through some dry roads, but under the underpasses was ice. And mm -hmm. I would get through mm -hmm. part of the ice and the back tires slip a little bit. And then just bam, it just it felt really solid. Like almost it didn't whip me back, but it just it felt like everything grabbed. And I don't know if that was because okay. the tires grabbed fresh pavement or the full drive auto kicked in, set more torque to front tires. Yeah, if you weren't if you weren't like on the gas at that point, it's probably just hitting fresh pavement. If you were in fact accelerating at that point, um it's it's those it's the front axle just getting more more engaged at that point. And again, we okay. do it very quickly because we're engaging, we're engaging a clutch pack. It's 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 milliseconds. So if, if my RHO is engaged all the time, mm -hmm. th there's been some questions because your different trucks do different things. Like in Ram lineup, you have some that tool yeah. drive. Is, is there durability concerns with the clutch pack? Is that going to get hotter because it's always constantly kind of working? Fantastic question. You must you must have done some Googling before we got on here. <laughs> so, yes. I've learned a few well, things over the years. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding with you. But yeah, no, yeah, that's a great question because... As clutches are, we, we've designed these things to run some level of slip, and they and they have a full durability of hundreds of thousands of miles. They're wet clutches that are in oil. They're they they're designed to slip. But if you slip them too much for too long, so you're in the sand, um, and there's perhaps an issue. Um, one wheel is is always or one axle is always spinning, and the and you just stay in it, and you've turned off your traction control. We do have. A, a model. So we do something, we don't actually have a temperature sensor in the transfer case, but when we do our testing, we develop a curve, a, a what we call a, a duty cycle. And we're looking at all of the inputs that are, that are causing the, the clutches to slip. And we then can reach a point where we'll say transfer case, knee, uh, transfer case overheating, um, reducing torque. We have some messages that, that really kind of give a, give an indication of a problem or, Hey, this is, you know, you, you got to back off at some point here. You're not going to get out of this, this rut, you know, think, think of something different. So we do protect the system. There's no way you will ever fry your clutches. We've designed that in to predict the temperature 
and to, to, to back off uh, at the right time. We really don't expect that people are going to find that uh, unless they're really in a situation where like they know they're, they're pushing their truck too hard and they're just maybe in a panic situation and are, and are really overdoing it. We call it, we call it abuse cases and we want to, we want to protect, we want to protect the, your truck's equipment, even in abuse cases. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, so the other question I have, if it's always engaged to some mm -hmm. degree, yeah. Doesn't that hurt mop per gallon? Wouldn't it be better if I was able to have like a two-wheel drive mode? You know, that's, yeah, certainly two-wheel drive is better. When we can fully disengage those clutches, it is incrementally better. So yeah, leaving it in four-wheel drive auto is something that, yeah, it's, but we look at it at an RHO customer, not necessarily bought for fuel economy type of purposes. Right. Um, it's, it's more attuned to what that, what that system can do. And if we look at the torque capability, um, some of these transmission transfer case combinations, I'll say for even, for example, for a Hellcat, all of that torque going through from a, from the Hellcat uh, is something that we, just, we, we need to divide that torque up between the rear and the front axle. Otherwise you have this just massive boilerplate type of materials. That's like, then the trucks, it's, it's only getting heavier and heavier and heavier in the vein of maybe trying to save fuel economy, it just it just doesn't work when we put that much torque and horsepower in front of it. Okay. Now, in our so, case with a Hellcat, you got 540 horsepower. You still got a ton of power. There's no there's not a torque problem that says we couldn't put it to the rear axle like we do on our the rest of our lineup with the with the high output Hurricane. Yeah, it's just no, for the I, RHO. It's more it's more to what the RHO is meant holistically and what you what an RHO customer expects. Yeah, no, I it's it's miles per mile. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's still miles per count. It's, it's fun. To, it's a really fun truck to drive. I really enjoyed having it so far, but it's miles per mile. Um, so, but thinking about, so if I had a big horn though, and I had two wheel drive and four wheel drive auto and that kind of stuff, yeah, is it it's better for fuel economy for two wheel drive? But can you, for those customers, I get this a lot. So it, it, the the calendar turns. It's November now. You're in Minnesota. You're in northern Montana, someplace. Now the roads are kind of questionable and you just want to have that kind of backup or, you know, I just, I don't really want to always turn on four-wheel high kind of stuff. It's okay in those months to run four-wheel drive auto in those systems? You can run all day long, every day. No problem. All, okay. all you want. It's it's going to act a lot like your RHO where it's kind of on the ready. It's it's very light torque. And as I mentioned, those sensors, as as, as we're seeing that the, the torque demand is low, you're driving straight, low pedal, easy driving. It's like, yeah, we're pretty much backing that thing off to almost two wheel drive anyways, realizing we don't need to just consume energy and slip clutches for, for no reason. So you're kind of almost there anyways. Drive a truck. I drive a truck with an auto T case. I live in Michigan. I pretty much just put in four wheel drive auto and kind of forget about it on days like today. There's snowfall every couple hours, a little bit of glaziness. It's just, I just kind of forget about it and just leave it in four auto. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I get that a lot from customers who are just concerned whether they should turn it off or turn it on and and manage it. Um, no, it there's no worries. No worries at all to, to just put it in four auto and go. All right. Now, what's the difference between four wheel drive auto and four high then? Okay. Yeah. That, and we see those buttons and I get this question actually quite a bit is four high is essentially locking up. It's just saying we're going to send half the torque to the front, half the torque to the rear, and we're not going to back off. Even if the steering wheel turns, even if we see some slip somewhere, we're just locked. And so it's essentially acting like a what we call the part-time transfer case on some of our more base models. And we have this even on some heavy duties, like you basically just lock the front and the rear that lock the front axle to the rear. And that's, those are the ones that crow hop. So that's for those situations where if you're, if you're really doing some more serious off-roading and not ready to go into four low yet, but you want to make sure that you're always going to have maximum traction to both axles is you'd pick four high. And you really only pick four high when you're on some loose surfaces. And the, I, I tend to turn this on at the hotel in Ardmore I'm staying at. I turned on four high. The road's really nasty. Mm -hmm. I made a turn and I looked, and I, I don't know if I looked over at some point later on, but the truck was back in four wheel drive auto. So does that, does that, did it do it for me? It, no, it shouldn't do no. that for you. If okay. there's a key cycle in there, then maybe then a key will... cycle or something. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's, you have to go to four high and once you're in four high, it'll stay in okay. four high. 
we don't we're, we're essentially recognizing that you press that button you want four high and you you take the good and the bad that come with four high now yeah. four auto because it's it has to sense a little bit of slip first before it locks up the clutches so there is a benefit certainly in off-road and it's it's a little bit subtle four auto is great for probably 90 percent of of two track and dirt driving and a lot of stuff that that truck drivers do unless they're intentionally like recreationally off-roading they usually pick four high to maximize that performance or go to four low for everything that that now increased crawl ratio and everything gets for climbing hills and four lows its own and we could do an entire discussion on four low but we're going to keep it four high for today okay yeah no i've i've gone into the four low discussion and that's yeah <laughs> there's, there's a lot of uh, old man wisdom in there i'll just say yeah there's there's some there's some good times in four low yeah um i got one final burning question for you this is the okay. top question so oh, if really? the auto four wheel drive is always somewhat engaged and torqued to the tires and such does that mean i can't do donuts Yes, that's not the answer you wanted. Oh, I will man. say your best your best chance of doing your best no. Well, you know what? No is a, that's a that's a that's a hard answer. What we did with Baja mode is all you got to do okay. is put the truck in Baja mode and now go go do donuts. And we we like to drive these trucks. We like to drift and we like yeah. to do donuts. We just, so put it in Baja. Turn off your and turn then, off your stability. You're, you know you've got the button for for stability control, which will yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't turn it off entirely, but we're we're recognizing that we open up those those limits, but still keep you safe from it. It's a safety net is still out there. Put in Baja, press the stability control button, and and let it rip. All right, there you go. That is, I'm telling you, that's that's going to be nine billion Google views on how to do uh, donuts. Yeah, and it's, there's no trick. That it's it's not like. There's still the safety net there, but we got to recognize, hey, when somebody presses that button, they know that they're they're doing something specific and we want them to, to enjoy the truck. But we don't right. also want them to to do something they didn't intend to. So, yeah, yeah I, that's, I got the that's, that's the best combination on an RHO is Baja um, okay. and press the stability button. All right. Duly noted. I'm going to make a note of that. <laughs> and enjoy. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Doug. Sure thing. All right, there you go. There's my conversation with Doug talking about the auto four-wheel drive system. Thank him again for joining me. This is a very interesting topic, something I'm hoping you guys learned something from today. I always like talking to engineers and getting the real answers behind some of these questions that I have. Now, we also had a little talk off-camera talking about all-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive. And let me just give it to you really simply, is in an all-wheel drive system, you only have torque sent to the tires when you have slippage. They have a viscous coupler that engages, sends torque. Once the slippage doesn't happen, the torque comes off those tires. In the four-wheel drive auto system, you're constantly sending torque to the front tires. And a four-wheel drive system is constantly sending it up there, so four-wheel drive high as well. The torque is constantly going up there. So all-wheel drive, only when slippage happens. Four-wheel drive, always, at all times, when you engage the system. Pretty significant difference there, which I was happy he said it that way because that makes sense to me. Yes, I read a lot of articles on this too, and I get more confused because everybody has different opinions. So that's the difference between all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive in the simplest terms. Very easy to understand. Make sure you check out other videos on this channel for more details from engineering up over here. Website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. You can hit me over there up in the forum, ask some questions, and I can try to follow up and give you guys the answers you're looking for. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.